It was on a Thursday night, May 2005, when I received a call from one of my friends telling me of a friend of his who had held his pregnant girlfriend hostage wanting to shoot her. We rushed there and managed to talk him out of it. In the car ride over, I thought back of the death of my two cousins and their mother. It was in summer 1996, the 24th September, four days before my 17th birthday. That day took my dearest cousin brother. I had to come face to face with my loss the day I had to go and wash his corpse. Looking at an eight-year-old body with a bullet wound in his head, holding back my tears to prove to my grandfather that I am now a real man and can stand up to tough times, proving to him that he did not make a mistake by choosing me to wash my younger brother's dead body. It was only on the day of the funeral that I broke down and cried. I couldn't believe that I would never see him again. We had spoken of many things that we were going to do as brothers. Those dreams were buried on that day. I cried till I had no more tears left. I stayed at the graveside for about three hours asking myself, why did the father do it? Why did he kill three members of his family? What made him do it? I didn't have the answer to those questions. The man died three weeks after the funeral. Even himself didn't get the chance to tell me why did he do it. Even if he told me the reason, that wouldn't bring them back. As I grew up, I dedicated my life to being a gender activist. I now work for Men as Partners, a program that advocates for women's rights and encourages men to take an active stand against gender-based violence and femicide. While in the car, one question repeated itself in my mind. When is this going to stop? Men killing women and wiping out their families as if they are killing flies. Let's stop these killings now. You strike a woman, you strike a rock. <laughs>